Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Evelyn and I'm back with another Loch Ness Marathon training update video. And it's week eight or 14 weeks to go until the big day, which is on the 23rd of September this year, 2018. And I'm coming to you on the last day of the plan, day four. I didn't get round to doing update videos on the day, so I'm just gonna roll them all in one go. So I hope I remember how I was feeling on the other days. As usual, if you looked at the end of last week's video, you'd seen the plan for this week. So it's four day a week training plan. The first day is a 5K comfortable run or jog of up to seven minutes, 40 seconds per kilometer. And that's normally on the Tuesday. And then Wednesday was 8K at a fast between 5.41 and 5.59 minutes per kilometre. And again, the same pace targets for another 8K on the Friday. And then Sunday, which is today, is due to be 16K at a comfortable jog, a faster jog, but a comfortable run of between 6.15, I think, and 6.48 minutes per kilometre. So let's go back to Tuesday. So I did that five mile run. I tried to keep to the seven minutes 20 pace, but I wasn't able to keep that slow. So I run up this main hill, which is just around the corner from me, and that slows me down at the beginning of the run. And then I managed to catch up to a comfortable, I think for me is actually six minutes, 30, 35 seconds. So sort of caught up to that. So I think my average overall was 649, 650. So it was a nice run. I managed to get to the top of the hill okay. And uh, it was lovely. It's been a lovely week this week. It's probably a bit too hot for running, but lovely temperatures. But if you keep in the shade, the, you, get, you catch the cool breeze. So that's been nice. So that was Monday's run. It was no problem, no irritations or anything. So that was good. So Wednesday's run of 8K, I didn't get around to doing a full 8K on that day. I still did a mile run back from the cinema, but I didn't have time to do the full 8K. And the reason was, is I planned to go to a secret screening. I have a Cineworld Unlimited card and they every so often will send out an invitation to a secret screening. So you're basically seeing a film that's supposed to come out in the near future, but hasn't been released for general public as yet so I decided that I'd actually go to one of these for a change and uh, so I did it on the Wednesday and it was Incredibles 2 which is a good a nice surprise somebody in the audience she must have been 30 35 and she's like oh my god I can't believe it it's made my day <laughs> it was fun to watch um I don't think it was as good as the first one but it was really good so I enjoyed it so it was good and then I I thought if we finished earlier because the time to view was 7.30. And I thought because it's a private screening as such, it will be shown quicker than it normally is because normally you know to come in at 20 minutes later because then they'll have the adverts and then the trailers and then the film starts up to 20 minutes later. I was hoping that they would like cut out the adverts anyway, but they didn't. I think it was even longer. So I don't think it's actually started till about eight and it ran on for about two hours or so. I mean, you didn't notice the time, but by the time I left, it was about 10ish. Although I probably could have on a normal day gone and did my 8K at 10. I wasn't really dressed for it. So I just wore my trainers and a sports bra and then I ran home. <laughs> so it's about a mile home. So that was my run streak day run done. I pushed all my runs for the training plan to the next day. So I did my 8K on the Thursday and that was earlier in the day. It was probably midday, not too early, but early in the day. And I don't know, I think it was really hot and I couldn't keep to time. Yeah, I think I had to pace myself. I can't remember the exact time, I'll put it here. <laughs> so that you know, but it definitely was a little bit slower than it should have been. So yeah, it definitely wasn't under six minutes per kilometer pace, but I felt good. It was better than the week before. So I'm improving, but it wasn't as fast as it should have been. But I think it's the heat that did it, so. So I didn't have my rest day in between the two 8Ks. So Friday, I did say that I was gonna do 16K for the Friday instead of Sunday because of the five mile race on Sunday. But because I did the 8K, fairly fast for me the day before, I decided just to stick to 8K. 
So I did that on the Friday and it was okay, it was good, it was a good run. Um, I think it was slightly slower from what I can recall. I should have checked these, but it's on my phone and I'm film filming on my phone so I can't interrupt it. <laughs> yeah, but it was a good run, I did it okay. Nothing to uh, write home about. And then Saturday was park run day, so I was planning to PB because I think my Friday's run felt really good and it sort of spurred me on to how I was feeling. I was feeling really good, feeling really energetic. My keto has now plateaued. I'm like, I'm not feeling groggy anymore. My energy levels are back again. So I thought, yes, Saturday, let me try and PB. <laughs> My PB at Parkrun is 26, 23, I think, yeah. And I've been running 27 minutes, 30 and upwards for like since January, since I PB'd. And I haven't got close to 26 anything for such a long time. So I was thinking, oh, today, let me try, let me try. And is this girl can as well? So that was in my head to do it. It's like, yes, today I'm gonna do it, this girl can. But um, it was a good run. It was really hot again. The sun was blaring, but it felt good. But in the end, I ran it in 27 minutes and 15 seconds on my watch, but the official time was 16 seconds. So 27, 16 seconds. So still uh, 15, seconds off 26 something, but a good 45 seconds off my PB. So sort of getting there, but not quite. And I think that marathon training does slow you down a little bit, but I think last year I was doing well during my marathon training, but that's a common discussion. I think now because of the heat, everything is slowed down on average. So I need to really compare my 14 weeks out to Manchester 14 weeks out and see how well I'm doing. But overall, the run felt fine, I felt fine, so it was a good run. So I enjoyed that. Even though it wasn't a marathon training plan run, it was a good park run. And then today, day four of the plan, I intended to run to the race as a warm up. So as the pace was only up to 6.48 minutes per kilometer, I was hoping to just run up to that so it would be a comfortable warm up of two miles and then do the five mile race, race pace, not um, marathon race pace, but just normal race and try and do as well as I can, knowing that it's gonna be heat, knowing that there's gonna be hills from Luton Hoo, and knowing that it's close to midday, it didn't start until 11. So I left my house this morning at about 9.40, and it took me about 20 minutes or so to get there, so I was there a good time to like rest up. I didn't feel any niggles at this point, but. I felt good, ready to go, started chatting to everyone. And then just as we were starting the race, I could feel like a pain in my hip, my left side hip. I don't know what muscle it is, I couldn't tell you. And normally I feel that if I've done um, squats or something and I haven't been doing my squats, naughty me. But I didn't know where it was coming from. So I sort of started off a little bit, um, what's the word? I don't wanna use daintily, but I was being cautious. So at that beginning of the race, I was a bit cautious as I started off. And a lot of people that I normally run in the same level, they were going ahead. So I just thought I'd be comfortable, be about six minutes or under if I can to run. And I didn't realize I had done this race last year. So I wasn't even trying to PB it. I know that my five mile PB is uh, 41 minutes or so, but that's on a flat Hatfield course. And this has had heels, so I wasn't even intending to like get close to 41 minutes at all, 42 minutes. But I was just gonna take it my stride, make sure I'm not going over six minutes, five. Basically try and do what I'm supposed to do for my 8Ks earlier in the week, which is up to 5.59. Basically, that was my plan. And so, because I was being a bit cautious at the beginning, I could feel it more, so that helped me to you know, just run gingerly. <laughs> but anyway, so after like the first 2K, so at this point I'm already warmed up because of the two mile run up to the start, warmed my body up, so I wasn't feeling the issues you, that I normally feel at the start of the race. And I think I said in a previous video that I would make sure I warm up for races now. I don't know if that two mile did instigate this pain, but I don't recall feeling it when I left the house in the morning, but I feel it now, that's for sure. But anyway, so after about two, three K, 
the pain had subsided or I couldn't feel it because I was running. So I could carry on running. So looking every, I wasn't looking down at my watch, but every time it beeped, I would check what time it had said. So I think the first was about 5.58, which was good. The second was about the same. The third K was about 6.15, but that was one of the first hills. And it was a long, it was more of a long slope incline. So yeah, I just, you know, kept, kept jogging through, jogging through or racing through. And I felt fine after that. So I felt nothing of it. And so it was basically, you start at Venue 360, behind Venue 360, and that takes you a long path towards Luton Hoo. You don't go all the way up Luton Hoo, but you go up to about maybe two and a half K from the Venue 360 into the private road, into the grounds of Luton Hoo, which is always beautiful. I love that course. Even though it's hilly, it's a beautiful course. And then you, there's a turnaround point about two and a half K and then you run. So you know, you know you've done about a quarter when you get there. And then you run back down. And then when you come back to the Venue 360 area, rather than going back where you came from, you're going around the, uh, I don't know if it's a football pitch or not, but possibly football pitch. So you're going around the other way around the football pitch to do your first little loop and then back again to do it again. So water station at the near the start area and then back again. And I didn't feel a thing, but I stopped to walk because it was cups and I needed something to drink because it was really hot. It was about 19 degrees at this point. So that's 19 Celsius or centigrade. And yeah, so I did, definitely did stop to walk when I drank my water, but as soon as I finished the water, I carried on. And uh, yeah, I didn't feel any pains when I started off again. So I carried on, tried to catch up with some people who I could see in the distance, who I'd normally would be ahead of at this point. So I caught up with people, caught up, caught up. Um, and then obviously, if you, because you're looped course, you see the lead runners speeding past. <laughs> it's amazing how fast they can do it in the heat. It's like they don't even notice how hot it is. I don't know how they do it. One day I'm gonna be like that, one day. But anyway, yeah, so carried on, speeding through, taking over people, slowly but surely, steadily. And then this group of girls from Dunstable Runner is like cheering, hello purple, hello purple. Cause you know, I'm the, this runner loves purple on Instagram and I try and wear purple everything. So this is my Stopsy Striders shirt and I'm wearing my running club shirt. It says red, but I'm wearing purple. I can't bring up my knee. So I'm wearing purple capri pants and socks and no purple watch anymore, but the um, the face is purple. I changed it to the purple theme. Purple bits of my hair. <laughs> you don't need to know that. So they were just, were just ahead of me cheering, but just at the, the last turnaround point. So once you turn around, you know, you've only got a quarter left to do. So that's about two, just under 2K to, to do. So it's like, yes. And it's sort of more downhill on the way back. So I was trying to pick up more speed I didn't feel any twinges or anything. I didn't, there's nothing that cracked or snapped for me to feel a sudden pain. Kept on running through and then, um, and then I could see the clock. So I didn't want it to turn to 48 minutes. So I just ran as fast as I could to, to get to the finish, which is fun. And then after the finish, I met up, got my water, got my medal. And then that's when, and I did it in 47.28, which is really good. And I think I said earlier, I didn't realize I had done this race because I was, I only did one, I thought, of the series. There's three in the series, the Luton AC Summer Series. There's three races. So it's today's is the John O'Callaghan uh, five mile race. And next week will be a 5K at Wardown Park, which is basically the park that I do park run at. It's not the same course, but it was this, it's around the same park. And then two weeks later will be the 10K, which is the one I thought I did. So I didn't think I had anything to compare to. Normally, if I've done a race before, I'll check the times and see, try and do at least equivalent, if not better. But I just had no clue that I did it. So I rather didn't, I didn't even go and check <laughs> to see, oh, maybe I did this one. So I, I just thought I did the 10K. So now I'm thinking maybe I did the 10K and the five mile. That's so weird. But anyway, oh, I know. I didn't do it last year, but I did it the year before, so it's 2016, because it's now 2018. Okay, so I did it in 2016. 
Yes, it's all coming clear now. <laughs> because anyway, when I uploaded it to Strava, it said I trended fast. I was like, but I didn't do it last year. So my memory doesn't fail me as I thought. <laughs> so today I did it in 47.28 and then my previous this run I did it in 55.43 so that's a huge improvement. It's definitely a course PB, maybe it was not from last year as I thought <laughs> but it's definitely um, better than the one before and again it's not a race PB because oh, my fastest five mile is at Hatfield and that was 41 minutes 57 so but all in all with the weather with the heat and with the hills I'm chuffed with that. Um, but as I said, as I walked through the finish line, collected my water and my medal, that's when I felt the pain. So I could feel it walking, but it wasn't painful as such. I just could feel that I had a, a hip pain, like a minor pain. So I was just lifting up my knee and turning to the right. Maybe I'm making it worse doing that. But apart from feeling the pain slightly when I walk, it wasn't like affecting my walking. And then we were chatting, just chatting, waiting for the, our other runners to come through so we could cheer them through. I got a little bit thirsty, so I walked to the other feeding station where they had like clementines, bananas, water, and cereal bars. So when I was walking over to get some more water, that's when I could feel the pain. It was definitely like, ah, oh, there's a problem. I think there's a problem here. And I think this is my first running injury. Uh, last time I had an injury, it was during the race. And that was at Bournemouth at 80 miles and I had to walk the rest of it. Whereas today, obviously it's a shorter race, I could just run through it. I thought walking it through, I'll be fine. So just carried on walking and chatting. And then me and a couple of Dunstable Road Runners went to Starbucks. I enjoyed a nice sugar-free caramel frappuccino with loads of cream. It was delicious. I was looking forward to that all day. <laughs> so we went over to Starbucks, which is just across the road. And then we sat in the sunshine, drinking our frappuccinos, talking runs and chatting about, you know, running races. And I found out that they're doing Loch Ness Marathon as well. So that's good. I'll meet them up there. So that's cool. And then we're talking running injuries and all such and such. And I think that probably weighed in my mind a little bit about my little niggling injury that was happening um, and they live fairly close to me so but I was supposed to run three miles to finish off my 10 miles for today's run so a 16k is 10 miles and I had done two miles or 3.2k to get there and then 8k or five miles in the race so that's your 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11.2, 11.3K I had done. So I just needed to do just under 5K or three miles to get home. So I was just gonna do like a long-winded extra mile out and then run two miles home. But that wasn't to be. So as I bid them goodbye, I said, I, I, we're going the same direction. So I walked with them for a little bit. And then I said, okay, when I get to this road, I'm gonna start running back. So as I started to run off, I couldn't run properly. I was limping. I could physically feel my body limping or trying to compensate for my left hip. And so I, I tried to do the first 1K at a very slow pace. I think it was actually seven minutes 30 pace and um, it was painful. It was definitely painful. I've never felt this much pain since Bournemouth Marathon. And so I sort of thought if I ran through it like the, like in the race, I couldn't feel anything in the race. So let me see if I pick up some speed. Maybe I'm not going to feel it until I finish running. Nope, couldn't do that. So I had to stop and walk. And then when I stopped and walked, my knee hurt <laughs> on the same leg. So it's like I was starting to do like a little run walk, but that was too painful. Walking was fine in comparison. So I basically walked a lot of the way. It was a walk run as opposed to a run walk. <laughs> so I walked a lot, maybe three, four minutes at a time, and then I'd run for like only 30 seconds at a time. I was so disappointed in myself. I was like, not disappointed, but 
and thinking, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I hope this is like a one-off and it'll be all right tomorrow. Because I haven't been feeling any real niggling pains at all this whole week. These last two, I don't know if it's because I did two 8Ks in a row and a fairly fast 5K at Park Run and then the race. Could be that. I didn't have enough rest days in between, so I don't know. I'm hoping I'm okay tomorrow. I can't even afford to go and see somebody to look at it either at the moment because I haven't got a job yet. And I thought having number seven lucky number would uh, give me luck, but nope. <laughs> oh dear. But as you can see, standing here, I feel fine. Um, if I'm walking around, I feel fine. I've not even any knee pain feel fine. So I've got a foam roller so I'm gonna give it a try and just rest now for the rest of the day and hope that tomorrow will be fine. Tomorrow is Stopsy Striders social run or Stopsy Striders club night and I always have that as my social run so I'm gonna run slowly and see how it goes and then if that's a problem then I'm gonna scrap next week's plan. I'm just gonna do one mile a day because I do have the second one of this race on Sunday and it's only 5K, so it shouldn't be too bad. If I'm feeling any pain, I'll try and just uh, volunteer at Park Run on Saturday if I can and not run that. Because normally I like to run Park Run before the race the next day, it's like a shakeout run for me. Uh, but if I'm still feeling any pain like I did earlier, I'm gonna just do one mile a day and then do the race again. Hopefully it'll be all right. <laughs> so that's my plan for next week. I will still put the plan up for next week. And then see how I, how close I can run to it. I of course, we'll let you know how it goes and how the 5K race goes. At the moment, overall, I'm running slower than I should be, apart from race races. And when I, plug in my times my a6 is telling me that um should we go and readjust your plan because you're running slower than you should be but i don't want to readjust it i'm going to stick with the four hours 16 minutes goal if i don't get it i don't get it but i don't want to adjust my time and then be even slower than my slow time i think i tried to see what the adjustment would be and it turned out to be 436 which is even slower than the previous one. So I know I'll do better in the race situation, so that's why I didn't want to adjust it. And I know I'll know what times I should be aiming for. If I don't get them, it's no problem to me, as long as I can finish it, that's the main thing. So on that note, I shall sign off here. Can't believe I've talked for so long. I'll try and cut this down <laughs> to a more manageable length of time. Thank you so much for coming back and checking out my updates and my channel. Please do subscribe and like if you liked it and I'll see you next week for another Loch Ness Marathon training update. Thanks for watching.